Hello YouTube, this is the Nerobin and today I want to answer some questions posted by the outsider Sean Connors to other game masters. The first is, how did you get into role playing? I got, uh, when I was very young, I got uh, a boxed set of the Dark Eye from a cousin of mine who was no longer playing that game and I was very intrigued by the artwork and uh, but I wasn't really grasping the whole concept of role-playing I just was um, interested in the fact that you could buy weapons and armor and uh, uh, and uh, beer and whatever that this free-form approach uh, was something I had not yet seen in a game. But uh, this only led to board games, uh, Hero Quest for me. Um, when I was uh, older, when I was uh, finishing uh, what you would call high school, I think, uh, I started to meet with some people to play another board game, Battletech, uh, and eventually uh, one of them proposed that we play the Dark Eye, which I already knew, in a way, even though not uh, the edition that we were using, which was qua uh, far advanced to the one that I possessed. Um, and I was very intrigued and have stayed uh, with role-playing ever since. How long have you been actually running games? Uh, shortly after I started uh, playing The Dark Eye, I also uh, was interested in DMing, uh, GMing and bought uh, my f uh, copy of Vampire the Masquerade, which is uh, a system that, uh, if it was played, I had to GM it. So I uh, only, in a recently got to actually play it. Mm. Then... Mm -hmm. What are your favorite systems to GM? Uh, Old World of Darkness. I'm mostly GM uh, Vampire, Dark Ages and Masquerade. I have yet to run a game of Requiem. Uh, also, I gave most of the others at least a short try. Um, I would love to do Wraith the Oblivion some more, and I really would like to try a Kindred of the East campaign. Though I think that is probably something that will won't happen in the near future. Um, how would you describe your DMing style? Um, I tend to create problems that I propose to the players uh, and let them figure out how they can actually uh, solve this problem. And if their ideas are good, I will usually let them. Uh, if it's a cool idea, if it's if they did not really think it through, then they won't succeed. Uh, and if they ten think they can simply ignore the problem, and then they ignore the problems, and there will be the resulting consequences. Um, so I tend to give my players quite uh, some free space in which to move, and I hope they like this, even though this tends to create situations in which they um, uh, discuss how what their next move is for half a session, which is sometimes uh, quite problematic. Maybe I should take the two men with guns come through the door approach more often in these cases. Um, what is your best quality as a GM? My best quality is, I think, that I uh, 
give this uh, free decision and uh, this free form approach to solving problems uh, to my players um, and I make it not so much dependent on their uh, their success not so much dependent on their on the dots they have on their characters uh, but on the decisions they make. I want to create a situation in which decisions matter more than uh, actually accomplishing something through physical, intellectual or social merit. Of course, it's far more easier, uh, far more easy to accomplish something if it's in character and therefore is uh, something that your character would do because he's good at it. So if you're playing a fighter, I will far more. I'm far more likely to go with uh, letting you succeed if you take an approach a fighter would do. Um, mm -hmm. What makes great GM? Um, the best GMs I've played with uh, have the gaming table under control. Um, they don't let people slip out of character for quick talkings or uh, or some such. Uh, they tend to involve the whole of the group um, and they create uh, suspense when possible. Why do you GM? This is a hard question. I've already stopped this video twice because I could not could not think of something. Um, and I think that's because the answer is very simple. It's actually a desire of me f to create stories. Um, since I've really uh, started thinking about GMing and uh, trying to improve myself, I've started to look uh, TV series differently. I think rather how they achieved something and why the uh, story did take this turn rather than the other. And um, I also do this when I read novels now. And it actually enriches the experience rather than diminishing it because it adds a new whole layer. I still enjoy the story for what it is even though I dissect it. <coughs> what would your player say about you? Um, maybe that I'm not as confident in my own abilities as I should be um, because I question myself very often but I personally think that is a good thing because I never get too comfortable with what I've just done even if it was good, I still seek ways to improve on that. And I think, yeah. Um, what things irritate you as a GM about yourself or about the hobby? Mm, as I just said, I tend to overthink uh, the GMing. Um, I tend to shift stories back and forth for two weeks and then uh, in two hours before the play I only get the real answer to how I want to proceed and that takes a lot of time out of uh, everything else I do and that's, it qu and that's quite annoying. Also um, in this hobby um, <laughs> you really meet some very, very strange people. Um, especially I've uh, for a time played Vampire Life and I think I've never meet cr met crazier people than then. And I really mean crazy. Um, but uh, a world takes all sorts of people, so... Okay. Uh, what makes a great player in your view? Um, a great player has uh, something in mind when playing a character. Uh, maybe not a fixed goal, or but they tend to think 
they have some kind of plan what they want their characters to be like and for this plan they stay with the choices they made. Also, uh, good players involve the other players. Uh, they think about how they can bring into play the one, the more quiet ones. That is something that also is part of uh, the GMing, but as a GM you can only do so much. If there's n only the characters in a room, uh, how are you supposed to involve a player? If you have already stated a problem that's best solved with his talents and he still didn't see it. That takes one of the other players to actually say, didn't you say you were a locksmith? Can't you just take a look at this? <coughs> well, uh, what advice would you give to any DM to help them? Well, look on the internet for any advice you can get since I've uh, stopped uh, just buying stuff without thinking if it's really necessary or not I found that the internet has uh, very very much information for GMs uh, by experienced other GMs for free and I think that's great that's really really great um, and if you have problems you should ask other ones uh, other ones of us because uh, every one of us has problems with his job as a GM and we should help each other uh, solve these problems uh, any way we can and uh, because I was uh, too lazy to actually uh, write down the questions from the video of Sean Connors uh, and copied them rather out of the uh, video from uh, Tetsubo. I also will uh, answer one of his questions which is uh, a question to my viewers. How many systems have you GM'd? Um, if you count uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Vampire the Dark Ages as two different games, then uh, that's uh, these two. Then there's Wraith, uh, I th Changeling, um, uh, then uh, I think I also did a go on Werewolf and Mage, but that was only short-lived. Um, uh, I will in um, this year I think I will start a traveler campaign and uh, for now that's about it uh, thank you for listening and uh, thanks for asking <coughs>